This year, I'm participating in Extra Life to raise money for Johns Hopkins Children's Center. Why? Because they saved my daughter's life two times. The first time was just within a few days of her being born. Um, they found out that she had um, something wrong with her intestines and they did a life-saving surgery. The second time was when she was two years old. And again, um, intestinal issue that they found and uh, with a quick and easy surgery uh, to uh, fix her up and save her life once again. Um, she had the, the same problem that she had actually was uh, what killed one of the BGs. Um, so it's one of those things that if, if left undiagnosed, um, it just presents as so many other things. And so, you know, it was great that the doctors they were able to figure out what it was and give her the surgery that she needed. So any amount that you can give will help because any amount will help Johns Hopkins be able to have um, better facilities or provide for people that can't afford it on their own. Um, I do have um, rewards for higher donation amounts, which you can see on the Extra Life page. But um, just anything you give uh, would be really helpful. And also, um, they um, have it so that you can donate uh, monthly instead of all at once. So if you don't have all the money now, but you know you want to give a large amount, you can do it that way. Um, thank you so much for watching this. Um, thank you for um, any donations that you can give. And thank you for supporting John Hopkins uh, Children's Center through Extra Life. Enjoy the stream. Hey there, new game tonight. Want to play um, the Stanley Parable? Um, not that I haven't been enjoying. Um, where'd it go? Uh, not that I haven't been enjoying all the other games, but um, but uh, I do want to try and make the most I can of the opportunity to to play the different games, and I'll get back to Road Not Taken soon enough, I'm sure. Um, so, got the game. Let's uh, add it here. Right here. That's the only bad thing with game capture is you can't have done it ahead of time. You kind of have to do the game. There we go. Alright, let's open it back up again. Alright, perfect. This is... Whoa. I like the picture in picture in picture there with the um uh with that which is extra trippy because I also have the same thing going on, on my other screen where I'm uh, recording and making sure that everything's actually recording correctly so this is pretty crazy. Uh it reminds me a little too much of work which is really funny. Let me see what the options are. Uh I do always like closed captioning. Uh I'll do full captions. Uh, video. Wide screen. Um, I'll leave it at 720. It could be higher, but that's okay. Um, okay. And uh, keyboard and mouse. I'm sure it's fine. Extras. Achievement enabled. Whoa. Achievement unlocked. Achievement. That's hilarious. And saves enabled. That's really funny. This is an <laughs> I had heard this game was pretty cheeky. That's pretty hilarious. Uh, you can watch the credits already. Uh, just in case that spoils. Let's not do that yet. Let's start the game. And the end is never. That's kind of trippy. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winning, Stanley relished every moment of the orders came in. At 
though he had been made exactly for this job. Was I definitely feel that way sometimes about work. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. That's no one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years of the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. Hmm. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Hmm. So right now I'm clicking. That's not doing anything. I'm pushing space. That's not making me jump or anything. But WASDA does the work. So sharpeners in and out box into something days Mondays maybe hmm. well let's see what's going on so I assume the game's gonna tell me what buttons to push at some point for now. Control will make me crouch. Space does not make me jump. Uh, what are other keys they usually use in games made on this? Uh... Oh well, let's see. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh my god, my wife could never play this for the same reason she doesn't watch Office Space anymore. It's too much like real life. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Who farted? Uh, uh, everyone has pencil sharpeners. I hate Mondays. It's 11.25. It's almost lunchtime. Someone didn't... There we go. I was like, someone didn't lock their screen. So, left mouse button does do something. I... Just like worst, I, I, my boss. Oh man, these remind me of the pictures we have in our office. The pictures up here. Hmm, papers all over the floor. Zombie apocalypse, maybe? Huh. It's really trippy. Everyone has a... has a room with a number on it. Huh. What's this? Knowing your city. Huh. If I was a little bit better in geography, I could probably tell where this takes place. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, <coughs> nor did it advance <laughs> the story in any way. <laughs> That's funny. Please, are you really just doing this for the achievement? Well, click a door five times. Is that <coughs> all that you think an achievement hmm. is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were Partition to click the door court. 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. 20 times, huh? Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, 
I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction <laughs> of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clips will do it. Yes, <coughs> certainly. 12, 50 clips. 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. No, 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 I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 417? Whatever that is. Do, 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 do. Gotta keep that in the back of my mind. Four, five, six, Ooh, seven. Great. Now go click a few times on door four three seven. Four three seven. Where is that one? I don't think I can get to that one. Four three one to four three six. Oh, there it is. Excellent. I think we're <coughs> getting somewhere. Now, door four one five. Let's give it ten clicks or so. <laughs> this is crazy. I wonder if there's an end to this or not. Now, back to door number 437. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine? Where is that? I don't even know where that is. All right. Back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Now go climb on employee 419's desk. That I don't know how to do. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. <laughs> go give me a few clicks on door 416. Oh my gosh. We've almost got it. Now the copy <laughs> machine do that one again. Hey, someone dropped a cup. it off, Stanley. Five clicks on door four three zero. Yes, we did it. Wow. Oh wow, that felt amazing. <coughs> oh, you really earned it, Stanley. <laughs> Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really now, what were you thinking? <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> That's really funny. I wonder if there's any other achievements worth doing weird stuff. Let's see. How do I do this? Don't play for five years. That's weird. All right. Anyway, enough of that. Uh -huh. Let's see. Where's the meeting room? Is this the meeting room? When Whoa. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? Okay. Out of the same picture over again. Huh, this one doesn't have a number on it. 
There's a meeting room. Yet there was oh. not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his bar <coughs> office, hoping he might find an answer there. This really reminds me of work. Pre-review, weekly review, weekly review, office party, cabal planning, group play. Complete today's unfinished exams. Right, he says it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. What? Push for funding of R and oops, of R and D, a new coffee machine. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Hmm. Not cost efficient. Papers are two signatures. I just wanted to fire them, guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, my desk. Please keep target. Oh, that's hilarious. It's over here. So far, I haven't quite figured out what they do other than being a parody of an office. Let's see. Right, so I got the achievement of not being able to jump. Let's see. What's over here? Some some graphs that are going in the wrong direction. What are your dreams for the future? Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta take a screenshot of this. People at work are gonna find that hilarious. This is too good. of slides on this slide. <laughs> what if this repeats? Whoa. Water coolers, more water he heaters. Dude, the people who made these are awesome. Alright, I want to get a nice good one. <laughs> Less air. Metamorphosis, travel, clear skin, spring break, hope. <coughs> I'm seriously going to make that my background at work. That's too funny. Forgot about screenshots for a second there. Broom closet. Oh yeah, there's some dude in here, right? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. But I thought there was some dude we were supposed to rescue from the broom closet. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. This reminds me of a really sarcastic um, bastion. It was baffling that Stanley was still <laughs> just in the broom closet. <coughs> he wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet FA. I gotta look up what that means. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What the? Oh, scary. Ooh, but Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? <coughs> All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. 
Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley Stuck. pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. <coughs> this is all a dream! <coughs> oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually huh, this gone. Elevator's jammed. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this Brothers. while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What the? What the then fuck? he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. Wait, what? It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's This music is really thoughts, freaking me out. He thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. I wonder what would have happened if I would have Everything gone up to the boss's office like I was supposed to. I am okay. Or if I had gone to the right instead of the left like I wasn't supposed to. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. Holy shit, this is not a good game to play before bed. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular what day, the? her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. 
I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. The end is never, the end is never. What just happened? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I wonder if I have to make all the choices before <coughs> the game ends. There was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Whoa, is that a nice office? <coughs> Whoa. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, I love that painting in the middle, and the one on the left. Who orchestrated this? What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. What the... Uh, escape? Uh... I... um... The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Mind control. 
control facility. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? <laughs> was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I think this may end up being my favorite game of 2015. This is... There was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or intense. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Uh. I assume that ends the game because if I'm not controlling Stanley, it can't go. chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do. Or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. So now I'm not controlling it anymore, it's just going on its own. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way. Right now, hmm. the things were meant to happen, and Stanley was happy. I like that ending much better than the previous one. 
I beat the game, supposedly. But the end is never. Alright, I am going to save. And, uh, uh, quit for now. Uh, but that was, that was pretty disturbing. That was, uh, I think, one of the craziest games I've ever played. I can understand now why so many people like this game. Um, that was really good. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna play some more tomorrow. Um, thanks for watching. Um, once again, remember I'm playing this um, for extra life, I'm trying to raise money for Johns Hopkins. Um, any money that you donate is gonna um, help uh, raise money for the hospital to save my daughter's life. Um, so please donate, and thank you so much for any donations you have given. Thank you so much.